friends and welcome back. Happy New Year! Today I've got my beauty favourites for you. I'm going to be doing a try-on style, so I'm going to be putting everything on my face and talking you through the products I find myself using the most during 2018. So if you want to see what I love, let's rewind and go back to the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to start with primer, which I don't wear every time I wear makeup to be honest. What is happening with this piece of hair? Um, but the days I do, I found myself reaching more often than not for this, which is the J1 Jelly Pack. It's essentially a kind of hydrating gel. Ooh, oh, I thought I'd come to the end of there. <laughs> Luckily not. There is a sort of trick to application, and this is basically it. Don't work it too hard, just smooth it onto the face, and then press it, and you will feel it becoming uh, tacky. And as soon as that happens, you are ready to go on with foundation. The effect that it gives is it obviously provides hydration to the skin but it also gives you a very glass skin kind of juicy looking effect. Um, it definitely helps with wear because it sort of it literally grips onto the foundation but it also just makes your skin look very um, I guess radiant but not in that pearlescent way. I mean it in the sense that the skin actually looks like it's glowing from within. So I really love that one. I've used it a lot over the past year. And then for foundation, this is the one I use the most. This is the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Cream with SPF 50. This is the shade medium. I might put a little bit of medium tan into the mix as well because I have got self tan on my face. This is the Real Techniques buffing brush that I'm using to put it on with, which is um, a huge favorite. Yeah, I think we need a little bit of medium tan, just a tiny squadge there. Mix it together, that's better. The reason I think I find myself reaching for this more than any other foundation is because it meets my criteria in terms of finish and coverage. So by that I mean I like there to be a very natural finish. I very much want to be able to see my skin through the foundation. I don't want the foundation to wear me. I don't want somebody to be able to see the product on my skin. And it's another reason why I work so hard at blending it in. You'll see I will go over it with a sponge now as well, just to get rid of any excess and kind of perfect the blending. And it's just lovely and glowy and lightweight and the color is a good match for me. And it does contain SPF 50, but I don't rely on that for my um, sun protection. I, I think that's foolish. You, you really need to use a separate SPF but what it does is just top up my protection which there's obviously no harm in doing day to day. I don't know if you can see the very kind of glowy finish and again by that I don't mean sort of pearly I mean literally that the skin looks I hesitate to say shiny but you know that kind of effect which I think looks really really healthy and is such a pretty kind of look for every day. And then my concealer combination will come as no surprise to you if you watch my Get Ready With Me videos that I do on Instagram. This is the Benefit of Rays Paste in number two. It is still available on the, I think the Edgar's Beauty website, although it has been repackaged as the Boing Concealer. I think it's the brightening version. They've got a couple, so the Boing Brightening Concealer. Um, and the shade range has remained the same, so I believe if you are a number two in this, you would also be a medium in uh, the other products. I love it because it provides really, really good coverage. Um, again, the color match is good for me. And really the main reason that I use it is because I like to neutralize my under eye circle so that I don't have to use such a heavy concealer. So it means I can use a lightweight concealer that doesn't, again, sort of block out too much of my skin. I still want to be able to see my freckles through it. And using a corrector allows you to do that because it does all of the uh, sort of coverage work for you. The reason that I then go in with a concealer at all is because of the peachy tone. It can look a little bit unnatural. So essentially the concealer just provides that kind of final layer um, of uh, color correction. And you can see I just blend it in with my fingers. That's pretty much what I do every single day. I never use a sponge or anything. For concealer, I will use a sponge or my fingers, depending on what mood I'm in. This is generally where I put my concealer and the concealer I'm using is the Maybelline um, Instant Anti-Age, the Razor Eye, which became available in South Africa in 2018, which I am absolutely delighted about because it's fabulous. It's kind of a gel consistency, I would say, and it's lightweight, a good color. It blends beautifully, it looks very natural, and I just find the finish is just really beautiful and it suits uh, this foundation very well. They are quite a sort of compatible formula. 
So there, that sort of highlighting effect is also given a little bit of dimension to the face, um, so it's not all sort of one flat colour, which is very important when doing makeup. And then I would obviously go in with powder, and the one I find myself using the most this year, sorry, last year, was uh, the Glossier Wilder. Um, I used it because it's what I had. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily something I would rush out and buy again. It's very nice, but, I mean, my other favourite, which is the MAC Prep and Prime transparent finishing powder um, is just as good to be honest I don't think that there's that much in it um, and obviously much more easily available in South Africa. The Innisfree mineral powder that I bought um, is also very very good but I just found myself using this uh, most of the year so those are three powders I can definitely recommend and then for bronzer there were two that I reached for this year the one is from Chanel this is the Soleil Tan de Chanel it's a cream bronzer it looks like that. I had planned it a very, very long time ago. And it's just the perfect tone for me. It blends beautifully. This is one of those things from Chanel that I would absolutely purchase and repurchase, spend my money on time and time again because I do think it's just a stunning product. Again, my motto with makeup is very much keeping it as natural looking as possible and you really do get, get that effect with this. Having said that, I also had lots of success with this much more affordable option which is the Butter Bronzer from Physicians Formula. I had to pan on it a few months ago which I'm very proud of and it's just a really good tone and a lovely formula and not expensive. I've got self tan on so I don't really need bronzer but for the purposes of this video and to also just again give a little bit of dimension to the face I'm gonna pop a bit on but not too much I have three favorite highlighters from 2018 which sounds excessive but I mean there's a lot more than that in my highlighter drawer the one was a favorite from the year before I believe this is the Maybelline master strobing stick uh, it's just absolutely fabulous it's so brilliant I've used about two centimeters of the stick so far. That's how much is left. This would last you a lifetime. I honestly just take a tiny little bit of my finger and then I pat it on the high points of my cheekbones, kind of up around like that. And it's just such a lovely champagne -y tone, very, very natural, it's not sparkly. So because I've got three highlighters uh, in my favorites, I'm gonna layer them, which probably will look a little bit full on, but let's see how we go. Uh, my other favorite is from Laura Mercier. I got it in a Sephora kit that I got earlier in 2018, and it is the shade Highlight 01 from the Matte Radiance Baked Powder range. You can get Laura Mercier from Skin, no. Yes, Skins Cosmetics in, Santon City. Most of the range seems to be there. And the reason I like this, it's going to be hard to tell because I've already put a highlighter on, but it's a very creamy glow. It's a very good everyday highlighter. Um, again, not sparkly, not shimmery, just like, kind of like the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders, but with a bit more of a punch. And then my third favorite in the highlighter category was from Wet n Wild, and this was the Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade Precious Petals. It's a really gorgeous peachy tone, but it's just so, so beautiful. I'm just gonna put that on as well. <laughs> this is really quite a lot of highlighter. Okay. Now, not having eyebrows is really bothering me, so it's time to sort that out. I don't actually have my favorite eyebrow product on hand because I've run out, I need to repurchase. It is the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Taupe. This is what it looks like, but this is the Soap and Glory Archery version. I happen to have some backups of this, so I'm just busy using them up. Um, but I do think the NYX one is better. This is something about the texture that is a little bit more easy to use. This is maybe a tiny bit more waxy, so you have to work harder to get the color on the brow. Um, and then I'm going to finish off with this from Eyelure. This is the Eyelure by Fleur de Force Brow Define and Medium. Um, both of these I bought overseas. They aren't available in South Africa. But it's just a combo again I'm trying to use up because I'm trying not to buy a whole lot of new makeup that I don't need. So I'll quickly do the brows and I'll get back to you. Okay, there the brows are on, and now I've realized I haven't put any blush on, so let's just quickly go back to the skin. By far my favorite and most used blush of 2018 were the Glossier Cloud Paints. The shade uh, Dusk is definitely my all-time favorite. It's just, it's my personal favorite tone of blush. Uh, it's 
quite neutral, it's sort of golden looking, um, almost bronzy in shade and I find that very flattering on my skin tone and also very neutral because it goes with any other kind of makeup look whether you've got a smoky eye or a bright red lip, whatever, this kind of tone will work. And then later in the year I bought the shade Beam which is more of a very bright coral. It's lovely on its own especially in summer but it's also particularly good mixed together because you're sort of amped up version of Dusk. And along the same theme, I think this is also a uh, favorite from the year before. This is from Chanel. It's also in uh, very much the same color family as Dusk. It is the shade Elegance number 370 and I believe this is a permanent shade in their range. I also use that a hell of a lot. Today I'm just going to pop on a little bit of Dusk and I mean a little bit, you use the tiniest amount. I mean, as you can see, I've had this for over a year and I have barely touched the surface because all you need, I'll show you, you won't be able to see it, is that much. It's a tiny amount. The great thing about this as well is that you can layer it over powder. It doesn't lift the powder, it doesn't go patchy. It's a really beautiful gel formula. Um, if you are looking for good uh, cream blushes, I don't know of any other product exactly like this available in South Africa, although Glossier is sometimes available on Samika and Muse. I will leave links below for these products. So if you're looking for a cream version, uh, Stila and Bobbi Brown make very good uh, cream blushes that come in, in pans, like sort of big round pans. So if that is something that you like, check out those products and they do have a, um, I know Stila's got a very similar shade to this. So check those out if you are interested. I've just put a tiny bit on and as you can see I've just kind of blended it in with my finger and it just gives a little bit of subtle definition to the cheeks without being kind of bold color. For eyes, I used MAC Groundwork a lot of the time as I always have, that's a sort of all-time favorite. But when I was wearing powder eyeshadow, I was wearing this primer, this is from MAC, it is the 24 hour extend eye base. I was given this by a friend and again in the interest of not, you know, buying things that I already have in my collection, I haven't repurchased the Urban Decay one although it is very good, or the Wet n Wild one which I also think is great. I've just been using this, it's, they're very very similar in my opinion, really help to keep your shadows in place so they don't crease. I can't wear powder eyeshadow without eye primer, it's literally impossible. And then palette wise, there's really only one that I reached for and that was this from Colourpop, the Give It To Me Straight palette. It looks like this. It is a collection of warm tones and then a couple of more plummy shades down the bottom here and a dark brown and a few lovely neutral transition and base colours that are matte. I really just got so much wear out of this palette. It is so pretty, it's so versatile, and I have to be honest, more often than not I was using one shade all over the lid, and that is the shade Straight Up, which I'm going to over here, and I'm just going to pop that all over the lid as one colour. I did this a lot with uh, Wet n Wild Nutty, which is also kind of to me the powder version of MAC Groundwork, not in terms of it being the same colour, but, wow this is so pigmented, can you see that? Um, not in terms of being the same colour, but giving a very similar effect. So Nutty is sort of a, uh, I would say a sheeny taupe. It's very, very pretty. And I also do this exact same thing where I just wear this colour all over the lid um, with nothing else because it's so easy. And this colour packs such a punch. It's so bright. I love this palette. I think it's gorgeous. I've got no idea if it's still available. If it is, I will provide a link in the blog post. And then the same shade along the lower lash line. I love this colour. It's so much warmer on me than it looks in the pan. In the pan it looks more like a, I don't know, like a sort of very pale bronze. And as you can see it's much more coppery on my skin tone. But I do tend to pull very warm, so not a surprise. And I love this color. I think it's so beautiful. Let's just get in these in the corners. And then the other eye product that I just absolutely fell in love with this last year was from Inglot and this is from the Jennifer Lopez collection. This is available in South Africa. This is the Pure Pigment Eyeshadow in the shade Cosmic Glow. It's a loose pigment. It is sparkly goodness. It's kind of a mid-tone brown sparkle with a green shift, which sounds odd, but the green isn't bright green. It's kind of a muted green, um, and you only see it in certain lights, but it is so sparkly and so gorgeous. I wore that all the time. That is my go-to quick and easy eye when you want to look really pulled together, like you've made a huge amount of effort, but actually it's only one product. What I'll do is use MAC Groundwork or any kind of plain medium brown eyeshadow underneath, 
and then I'll tap a bit of this on this is the NYX glitter primer so it basically allows that uh, loose pigment to stick to the lids I would do this before doing foundation by the way otherwise you do get dropped down um, while it's kind of sticking to the primer alternatively take your tissue and hold it up to your face while you're doing it because it will kind of drop down as you tap it on so put that on and then you tap the pigment on top and it just takes the look to a whole new level. Um, I have done that in a get ready with me on Instagram stories, it might still be up. So go and check out the highlights if you want to see that. But I highly recommend those, Camilla also has one and also wears it all the time and just absolutely loves it. And then for mascara, the mascara I used for most of the year was from Maybelline and it was the Total Temptation Mascara. It is the one that smudges the least on me, um, which is apparently my uh, method for measuring the success of mascaras because everything seems to smudge to one degree or another on me um, which is very sad but it is the truth um, and I think I said this recently in also an Instagram story about my empties that it gives you a very chunky volumized lash so it's not a sort of perfect um, kind of separated lash the way that you get with something like a uh, false lash effect from Max Factor. It's much more of a sort of, I don't know, kind of smoky eye, chunky rock and roll lash. Okay, and then as I do every single time that I put makeup on my eyes, I put eyeliner in my top and bottom waterlines, but I use different colors. On the top, always, the Smashbox Always On Gel Liner in the shade Fishnet. As you can see, it's worn down to a nub. Uh, it's just the best. It moves the least. It moves a tiny bit, but way less than any other black, black eyeliner I've ever used. And I literally just pop it in the top there. That just makes your lash line look a little bit thicker. Um, it's a very subtle trick, but one that works quite well. And then the lower lash line, this is MAC Power Surge, which is one of my all-time favorite beauty products. I've had this for years, and it's amazing. So there we go. It just adds a little bit of extra definition to the eyes. On the lower lash line, I use the number 7 Stay Perfect Long Lasting Volume Mascara, which I've no doubt you've all heard me say for a gazillion times. And then for lip. Right, so I have four products technically, uh, bear with me. I can't remember if I discovered this in 2018 or 2017, I'm feeling it might have been 2017, but I have kept using it. It is one of my major kind of South African drugstore recommendations. This is from NYX. It is a lip pencil in the shade Natural, again, worn down to a nub. I use this almost every time I use uh, any kind of lip product for definition and also to provide a kind of extra layer of color between the lip and the gloss or lipstick I'm wearing on top um, just so that it wears more evenly and I literally just throw it on like this I'm not overdrawing, I uh, can't be bothered also I don't need to, I was blessed with good lips and then I just colour in a little bit not the whole lip, just sort of inside the line a tiny bit and then smush it like that it's nothing fancy and it shouldn't take you long and then on the lips I really only wore one of three things to be honest probably my major major favorite of the year is this this is from Fenty Beauty it is the Fenty Glow Gloss Bomb guys it's just it's as good as they say it's absolutely amazing Camilla went out and bought it after I got it um, in I think it was in June when I was in Italy and it's amazing she bought hers from either Muse or Sumika, I can never remember the difference between them, I'm sorry, but again, the link will be in the blog post or below. And it just is the most gorgeous, suits every one shade of gloss, and it's not sticky, it smells amazing, it's not sort of offensively shimmery, but it makes your lips look really plush. And you also need very little, like I only put a tiny bit on, this is going to last me ages. Smells like some sweet we had as kids, but I can't think which. If anyone owns this and knows what it is it's reminding me of, please tell me. It's been driving me mad. So, I just pop that on, and it's just such a gorgeous, flattering color. It would literally suit any skin tone, from the lightest to the darkest. This is just amazing. Love it so much. And the other things I wore a huge amount, one of them was from Glossier. This is the Glossier Generation G lipstick in the shade Cake. It has been repackaged, but they do still carry this. It is a sheer matte balm 
and I don't have anything else in my collection that is remotely like this in terms of the type of product but also this color it's a slightly warmer nude than I usually wear but because it's sheer it doesn't look too heavy on me and that's what I really like and again it's a balm consistency so it's easy to wear it wears away nice and evenly it doesn't look all patchy when it comes off and I just love how it looks and feels on my lips I just think that's a fabulous product I've used that tons and then when I wasn't wearing one of those two I was wearing this and I always get questions about it when I wear it this is from Dior it is the lip glow in the shade berry that is all I have left in the bullet um, I will 100% be repurchasing it when it is gone but as far as I'm concerned this is the best lip product in the world um, it's the best formula that's ever been made they're regular lipsticks I'm also a massive fan of that, that are in this packaging um, let me see what's it called uh, the addict and the addict extreme ranges so the ones that come in these packages are just the best they're super balmy they are smooth to go on they are shiny without being super glossy they again wear very nicely um, they're just gorgeous and kind of sheer so I just think sheer lipsticks are the way to go it's just so much easier to wear so those are the lip products and then I really find myself using setting sprays consistently for the first time in 2018 and obviously the one that I used was Urban Decay All Nighter. It's just the best. So I'm going to set my makeup with that. And last but not least, my favorite fragrance for the year is something I bought in January. I bought it again from Skins Cosmetics in Santon and it is from Diptyque. It is the scent Tandao and I just absolutely love it. It smells very clean, very unisex. If anything, it's uh, maybe slightly spicy scent. Um, it smells to me kind of like skin. That sounds a bit odd, but it's just, oh, it's absolutely beautiful. It's subtle gorgeous i love that so much my first and only diptyque fragrance and i'm completely obsessed with it so those are all of my makeup favorites for 2018 i will be doing a separate blog post with all of my skincare favorites because there was just too much to cover in this video i'll do that separately it'll be on the blog soon keep an eye out for it if you have any requests let us know please subscribe please follow us on instagram and we'll see you soon